He would have put it in that guy's face. Fat guy from the oh, bench. Right. Yeah. In the credits. He lets him walk yeah, off. He lets him he's walk like, off. like, okay, whatever. He's sitting next to a millionaire. Yeah. He's like, well, I'll say a picture of Lieutenant Dan. The old lady was just like, she's just like, oh, she doesn't even know what to think. She doesn't even know what to say. She's like, oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, because yeah. as you were pointing out, you think she didn't really believe him, but she was just yeah. being nice. Yeah. And then, and then after that, I bet the, like, the, the rest of his stories to her, probably had such solid credence. You know what I mean? After she sees him on that magazine at that point, she's like... And she's the one that tells him where Jimmy is, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And here's the thing, too. You said he's sitting there all day. We don't know how long he's been sitting there. Just yeah. in the morning, I guess. Well, I mean, the number two bus is when the one lady got on. Okay. And we got all the way to the number seven, seven. bus. And she's waiting on the nine bus. So five buses... And I'm assuming they go every hour. Every, every hour. Every half hour. Every, oh, you never every, know. 15, every minutes. 15 minutes, you just don't know. I didn't direct a movie. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. Like when yeah. his family comes over, whatever, whenever they came over, he just generalizes it. He does. There are a few points where he generalizes, but other points he is like, so, you know, his memory is like crystal clear to a T. Maybe he, maybe he generalizes the story because he knows it's not important to the story. Maybe he's able to pick and choose what's important and what's not important. I mean, that's how your mind well, that, goes. I mean, that's, that is how human, yeah. my brain works. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah. 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 he rarely like, cuts it out. You can speak to me, and if I don't care what you're saying, I won't remember. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fact. I won't deny it. <laughs> I think even though we normally would not want to even admit that we would relate to someone like Forrest Gump, somebody that had an IQ of 75, mm -hmm. I think all of us, by the end of that movie, want to relate to Forrest Gump. We want to be in that character's shoes. I mean, he's... Yeah, right? You'd want to be able to understand love the way he, he does. love. Uh, you'd want to have such a wonderful life fishing, you know, <laughs> pump. You're <laughs> you independently might. wealthy, though. I was though. thinking that when I saw him fishing. Yeah, yeah. At his little forest. I yeah. was thinking, you know, about you and uh, JoJo fishing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, it's it's a thing people like to do. I myself don't enjoy fishing, I love but... It. I love to fish. Everybody in my family does, and everybody I seem to know loves fishing, and I just don't like to fish. I don't like fishing. But I don't hunt either, so. Well, I, it's just my, uh, so there's something about fishing for me that it's like uh, a man that can provide his own food is never a slave. You know, if you can provide your own food for yourself. Well, I, would, I would fish if I had yeah, to. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I don't yeah. do it for But there's, there's something about <laughs> just like, like, fishing. Oh, I got a, a day off. Let's go fishing. And <laughs> I do. Sweat, let me get bug bit. Nope, this city kid don't do it. <laughs> I do. I do. But yeah, when I saw that scene, immediately identified with JoJo and myself sitting by the water fishing, and it warmed my heart to see that. But he has a life, I think, that anybody would, would want. He's independently wealthy now. He can just uh -huh. run. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be yeah. independently? He's, yeah. He can just run for three and a half years. You for know? no reason. And for, well, I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah, not but, for no reason, but go yeah, ahead. He, he has a reason, but all these people get behind him. And why? Why do these people get behind Forrest? And when they when he's done, they have they don't have any answers. They, they don't even know what to do. Like yeah, why That guy's even like, like, shh. And nobody's talking, but he's like, shh, he's about to say something, and nobody's saying anything. The sizzling is there. very, like, simple. They're followers, and yeah. that's what a follower is. That's all they do. It's Force leader. Lead, or get out, or was it lead, follower, lead. get out of the way? Yeah, yeah. lead, yeah. follower, get out of the way. Well, those yeah. were the followers. <laughs> yes, they were, and they didn't even have a reason to follow, beyond no. that they had nothing to do in their own lives that seemed worth anything. They needed, they needed the, his So they just followed it. somebody that seemed to have something. They couldn't fulfill their own lives, so they had to get fulfillment from somebody else's succeed success. Right. Yeah. So they had to latch on to Forrest. Because yeah, he's big doing on, something. He had big long yeah. coattails hanging back behind him that they were all riding, right? Yeah. That was what was Basically, going on. Yeah. Seemed and, to be the case. And I mean, he even says in the movie, uh, he says, Before you can move on with your life, you have to... Put, put the past be behind you. you. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. Put the past behind you, and that's what his running was about was putting the past behind him and getting over. So basically he ran for three and a half years, whatever it was he said. He thought about oh, it. He thought he about looking at Dan. He thought about oh, Bubba. Oh, yeah. But most of all, he oh, thought yeah. about Jenny. Yeah. And I think once he finally accepted the fact that maybe he wasn't going to be with well, Jenny. Do you think there's film. any symbolism when they're doing their shrimp catching and they pull up like the army? The helmet and, and stuff the, like yeah. that. 
But uh, but I think there probably is some symbolism to that helmet coming through there. I mean, it is a recall back to when they were in the war. Yeah. And he and Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant even Dan in the war, well. is all like, "There's I, I sh shut up, get down," you know. And he's always getting a feeling about some rock or about some you know stick in the trail or whatever, and nothing's ever there. So. He's out, you know, now they're past Vietnam, they're on their front boat, he's like, they're over there, the shrimp are over <laughs> there, you know, and he's got some feeling, I feel it, they're over there. He gets an army helmet, you know what I mean? And so, <laughs> his feelings are absolutely wrong, pretty much, until he invests in some sort of fruit company. I guess he was right on that one. Yeah. <laughs> some sort of fruit company. <laughs> That's the thing is, it, it like, combinates delivery on everything. It just it works every it does. time, and you just yeah. believe that's Forrest Gump. Never do I think that's Tom Hanks. I have to like really look at him and look at Tom Hanks to see him. I think his whole action and attitude really went into the character. You know, he's like up and looking around, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's real subtle moments that are just like I never appreciated until tonight watching right. it. That he just he's stunning performance. Yeah, phenomenal. Phenomenal performance. There's other there's other things like background characters too that I noticed. Um, when Jenny's when they're in Washington DC and she yells out Forrest and he yells Jenny, the guy behind him to his left, like kind of looks like, oh, like there's some hoe out in the crowd, you know? And when he says Jenny, he's like, Oh, you know her. <laughs> <laughs> it's just subtle. Yeah. It's in the background. But it's good. Yeah, right? it's good. Yeah. And it's the scene. Yeah. It's, it's cohesive. Good. That next comment, when he does that, he said, Mom always said, life was like a box of chocolates. Box of chocolates. Yeah. Which is another theme yeah. that goes through the movie and kind of mirrors the box of chocolates is the feather. You don't know where the feather's going to blow to. You don't know what you're going to get out of that box of chocolates. Because she just comes she back. Just That's comes right. Back. She just showed up when he's mowing the grass. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. She needs something. And he, like, asked her to marry him, and she refused. You don't want to marry me, and you know. Then, you know, that but she, I don't hard, think she know? feels worthy, though. No, that's I don't think she does. Yeah, How that's could just you? it. You know, yeah. she's sitting in the room every after that night. Every morning, there's like flowers, or maybe it's not that night, or it's during that yeah. period of time. There's flowers, fresh picked flowers morning. every day, yeah. and that's what I thought in that moment. She knows she doesn't uh, appreciate them, or she hasn't appreciated them, and she doesn't deserve them. She doesn't deserve it, but she knows it. That doesn't that's matter to him. him, huh? That doesn't matter to him. No, it doesn't, and that's what I was thinking. It's true. It doesn't matter. And at that point, she didn't have to run. But she did. Yeah. But she didn't have to. Well, she didn't say, and that's funny, because she's, she is running, but the taxi driver's like, where are you running off to? And she's like, I'm not running. Yeah, it's just denial. Yeah, was it just denial? Yeah. Is there is there someone, or was she like, I'm not ready for him right now. I'm not worthy of him right now. I'm not running away because I'm running away. I'm running away to save Forrest. Is that what she was thinking? <laughs> right. is that, I know, I know. I get what you're saying, though. I know, I get what you're saying. Well, well, I'm, what not, you're saying. I'm, I'm he, asking questions. He, he says, what you're running from? And she said, I'm not running. And he, from her point of view, she sees it. You know, what we're, we've agreed that she knows she's not deserving of him. She doesn't yeah. feel she's deserving is what it comes down to. And so she does. She does leave. Yeah. But that's that is that's just running from commitment. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much. Which she's been running her whole I mean, that's life. What I said. From... You can rationalize and like make things sound however they want, but in that moment, she was running away again. Which it's it's a classic thing, you know. Someone who's abused when they're young uh, gets afraid of loving relationships and stuff like. You know what I mean? They they. Do, do we know why? That's the case. I don't. Well, I mean, I'm sure. Freud or somebody is here they can tell you. When your father gives you love the way that Jenny's father gives you love and you grow up. I don't know. I don't know myself, but that has to mess your mind up. Yeah, I think a lot of girls become strippers after that. I mean, honestly, like that's well, that with joke. daddy issues. That's and it's a joke, yeah. but it's kind of stereotypical. Mm -hmm. They get daddy issues and stuff and they're out there looking for a daddy, basically. And women like that a lot will continue to get in series of abusive relationships. Yeah, which is what Jenny did. Which is what Jenny did. And then I think it's because they never really feel worthy. And also, it's a model. Whenever you're young, and, you know, Freud would say that you want to marry your mother or you want to marry your father if you're a woman. Because that is what it's impressioned he, upon does you. Does he actually say you want to kill your father and marry your mother? Is it that I, 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 Well, I think he might have said that, but I don't know if, if that's... Well, that's what I'm asking. Is yeah. that, isn't that... It was extreme what he says. Yeah, it? yeah, it's pretty extreme. I don't know. I don't believe exactly everything that Freud said. I think he was kind of coked out. 
but you know, uh, but really, they they say that's the impression. So um, Jenny or any abused woman gets abused by their father, who is their main male figure in their life, and that's how they think love should be. You know, and so they go through their whole life getting abused over and over because they connect with men that were like their father. Right. Which is what they were first impression with. That, hey, this is what an adult male now, love is. It, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if you're abused or not. <clears throat> they, they say that about anything. Like, all, most women supposedly find men that are like, like their, their father. father. Yeah. yeah. So, whether or not you're abused or not, I understand what you're saying there. Like, you all, they, they would identify what they need in a man. Through and, that. Yeah. yeah. It's a messed up thing. Yeah. And that, but that's the thing. It makes Forrest, sense, though. Forrest tries to find, I mean, he finds Jenny sweet. And that's what he says when she, he gets on the bus, is the sweetest voice he ever yeah, heard. Her. Yeah. And he sees other, people for who they are. He looks for, uh, past all the bullshit, you know, of Jenny and all her, like, self pity and everything. He just sees her for who she is in his eyes. Well, that's what I guess I'm trying to get to is that she was sweet. She was, first, Thing she ever did to him was a good gesture, right? Yeah. Sweet gesture. And his mother was always there for him. So he, you know, that's a, that's why I was saying the parallel with Jenny and his and Forrest is that he was raised differently. Yeah. And he, yeah, he didn't care about what she'd been through, but she did. And that's what she kept her, that's why she keeps herself away from Forrest, mm -hmm. is because she is holding all that in still. Even, you know, we know that when she goes back and throws the rocks at her house, that it still bothers her. Yeah. And that's why she won't accept Forrest. Or won't accept, won't him. accept him as a as a man. You know, she still can't do that. And then she comes through at the end and says, well, I was messed up. You know, she finally, sometime, whenever she had a little Forrest and stuff, she cleans herself up. And I think that all begins when she comes back. You know, and starts staying with force. You can tell she starts looking a lot healthier. You know, the lights hitting her better, and like <laughs> yeah, where, where she climbs up, she's extremely skinny when she's yeah, when up. she's up on that rail. She doesn't look that healthy. Thin, no, her eyes are big dark circles, and and it's, it's, that is well, she has black eyes at some point. But that's yeah, not well, that's not that scene. Okay. It's the it's next like, time like, I think she has the black eye, and she goes out and there's a little jacuzzi or whatever in the background and stuff. That's when she gets the black eye. But when she's up on the ledge, she doesn't have okay. a black eye. She's just got two big dark circles coming out from underneath their eyes from all the coke and smack and shit. Because the dude's like in bed and just, yeah, you know, does, falling yeah. back. He doesn't even she's know his really lady's out on the freaking balcony. Man, talk about a scene that makes you just go, holy shit. Yeah. Because she's got those damn heels on, <laughs> oh. man. She's got those freaking <laughs> heels on. Yeah. And she's just like up on the ledge and you're just like, whoa, no, I'm going to fall. You know? it's, a, it's definitely a suspenseful scene. Yeah, when I was a kid, yeah, it was suspenseful. Another scene that was like that in the movie, and I don't know if it was intended to, but when I first saw the movie, when Lieutenant Dan says, I never thank you for saving my life, and then jumps off the pier, you know, when I first saw that, I was like, is he going to drown? <laughs> he's got no legs. He's got no legs. Yeah, he's got no legs. You know? Oh, he's got no legs. Is he going to drown now? Of course, this time watching, I hear <laughs> swear. But when I first saw that, I remember seeing that theater and being like, did Lieutenant Dan just jump off? What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, what is he doing, you know, because... He's letting go, Dave. He's yeah, yeah, go. he made his peace with God. I was like, oh, he, you know... <laughs> and, uh, and he's, you know, that's when, actually, I think that's the scene where Forrest says, I think is. Lieutenant Dan, he never yeah. said so or anything, but I think Lieutenant Dan made his peace with God that day. I was day. thinking about like that. Swimming into you the know, sun rays and stuff. Your thighs are like the fattest part of your legs. If you chop those off, I guess you would float pretty well, wouldn't you? Because my leg, these parts always kind of drag you. Hold you down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think you can still be buoyant. I think you can still yeah. back. I think you would. Legs. Yeah. Yeah. But as a kid, I watched him go over that, and I was like, is he just committing suicide now? I don't know. <laughs> but I thought he was over that. So <laughs> but uh, the thing too is that uh, Forrest excelled when he was in the army. <laughs> Completely, <laughs> which makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. Because it is like an uh, easy thing to get through. I mean, you just have to listen. And if yeah. you're smart and you like talk back, that's what's going to get in trouble. And Forrest didn't have that problem. No. He listened to, to do whatever you say. <laughs> Goddamn genius. You guys must have an IQ of 160. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to make general someday. <laughs> That's awful loud. But yeah, this is a, a prime example of a Hollywood film done right, though. I think so. Mm, yeah. I agree with it's, that. A, it's a wonderful story, like I said. Everything, there's nothing bad about it. The green screen or the blue screen, it, that was big at the time when it came out. It's what all it people talk about. And I think it was green screen. I don't think it was done in blue. I think it was done in green screen. 
The only reason I think I remember seeing him with green stockings on. Uh, Gary Sinise. Oh, well, you have to put, you have to put the special features in. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it was. I think it was. Both. I don't know. I think it was the start of green screen instead of blue screen, maybe. Oh, really? I'm not sure. I was going to point out the fact, though, most people think it's the start of Chroma King and films, but John Carpenter did it with in the, um, Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase, actually. Okay. And he they really. Um, Pioneered the technology. That was blue screen, though, right? I it's the same thing. I know it's chroma key. It's chroma key. Why do they switch to green instead of blue? Do you know? It just depends on what you're doing. Okay. If you got blue in your shot that you need, you can't use blue. Just like we don't, you don't use red because we have pigment. Red, mm -hmm. You know, so you use green and blue are your two choices. Right? Yeah, you can use whatever you want, but that's the two best. Yeah, they tend to do green and blue. Yeah, because they're less prevalent in. Any given scene, but yeah, they, I think they actually started doing it with blue, and they ended up transitioning. And like mostly now, it's just green. Oh, another thing on uh, Forrest Gump, they have uh, when Lieutenant Dan drags him off the bed, mm -hmm. you know, and he's got a diner, and he says, "Do you know what it's like to not be able to use your legs?" And Forrest <laughs> is like, "Well, yeah," because he had those braces yeah. on his legs when he was a kid, you know. He knows yeah. what it's like, and of course, Lieutenant Dan's like. What? You know? Yeah, he he just, like, he didn't get Last thing yeah. he expected was yeah. the guy to okay, say, cool. yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't really do much. I mean, uh, he just puts his head on Force's um, chest there for a while and kind of just, you know, breaks down. He and is. ends up sitting back, but... Yeah, he's he's totally broken down by this I couldn't imagine losing my legs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. It would be all heavy. Well, yeah. at the same yeah. time, I think he expected to die when he went to war. He felt that that was his well, yeah, destiny. he accepted it. He was, he you know, was fine with it. He, was and he, you know, and when he was there, he expected to die, I think, as yeah, his father's had before basically. him. Yeah. And now he's just some sort of freak with nothing to do and nowhere to go because his life was supposed to stop. He had already written his destiny. He had the idea that that's where he was going to be, that's where he was going to end, and that was going to be the story yeah. of Lieutenant Dan. You know, and when it went beyond that, he didn't know what to do with himself. He felt cheated. You know, that he had more life to live. Now, of course, that wraps itself up to the point where he's walking around on spaceship legs. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so yeah, that's a great story of personal growth. We get to see his character grow well, through yeah, that. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Gary Sinise is wonderful in that film. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And that's actually the movie that made me like Gary Sinise as an actor. So Yeah, and that's, well, I should bring up that I did get to meet Gary Sinise. And I would say that the reason I got to meet Gary Sinise, I don't know if this is fact, but... It might be because of his role as Lieutenant Dan. I don't know what it was that has inspired him to travel through the USO and do put on shows with his band, the Lieutenant Dan Band, um, for the troops. But he does do that, and he's consistent about it, it seems. And I was able to meet him once and see him play music once in Why Alabama. You were in, where are you in the Air Force, right? Yeah, I met him in Germany, and then I got to watch him play music in Alabama. So when I got out of the Air Force, I was in Alabama going home to Indiana. When I got out of the Army, he went home to Alabama. I couldn't wait to get away. <laughs> Maybe you weren't as uh, nice places when Greenbow was. Get me the fuck out of here. Montgomery, Alabama is not as nice as Greenbow. <laughs> Greenbow. <laughs> Greenbow looks like a nice place to call home. Montgomery, yeah. Alabama is a shithole. Yeah, it is dangerous. It's it's just bad. I mean, I know Rosa Parks did a lot there, <laughs> and I'm very thankful for that. But the town, the city itself, is just yeah. Sure. There's not much there. Dilapidated. It's just yeah. It's rained down. I think it's poor. I think it's it has been since the crime. Civil War, man. I think that the whole South is kind of a. You know, speaking of that, beat. watch Gone with the Wind yesterday. Yeah. For the first time, and that. You know, they go through and they show how the Union destroyed the South. South yeah. They just destroyed it to demoralize yeah. them all. And, and I still, didn't know that for some reason. I didn't. I don't know if I really have thought about that, but I was just like, how could you do that to your own country? And it, it just, I don't know. I didn't expect to get that from Gone with the Wind, honestly, watching it. But you bring that up, and it's yeah. true. The, the Dude, South yes, was destroyed. The South was and when I was in the South, destroyed. when I was in Alabama, and I was a Yank, Yankee, People hated me, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand that, but I fully understand Good it now. now right? that, that would be why they have such animosity still to this day against... You're a Yankee when you go to the South. You're a damn Yankee when you go to the South and you don't go home. 
I, I was, it was like, you know, it was like uh, prejudice when I moved to the South. I felt prejudice yeah. against me for it's being crazy. from the North. Yeah. I felt a little bit of that prejudice. Oh, I did so. Yeah. I was there. It was kind of interesting. Bubba's his best friend. And yeah. it, it's never a problem for no. me. It, it never even brings it up. No. It's unconditional yeah. for him. All that stuff, those conditions don't exist for him. You know, in his judgment of people, he judges them by their character. He never saw it that way. He just did what he had. He never even like he never looked down on himself. I mean, he no. he accepts that he's not as smart as everybody. The only time normal. he looks down he on himself is when she is when his son. Yeah. It's when his son. He's like he's yeah. not. Yeah. He's not like me, is yeah. he? You know, he doesn't. He wouldn't want his own son, son to, be, to be like him, yeah. which is interesting because he's a hero. Isn't that you know? heartbreaking? Yeah. It is heartbreaking, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you're like, well, what's wrong with Boris? You're not there, you know. It's so sad to think that even though he's accomplished everything he's accomplished, he's still ashamed of his ignorance or yeah. his IQ. Yeah. It's good. I think it also shows that he's not, you know, he's not so stupid that he doesn't get it. You know what yeah. I mean? He doesn't get that he's not normal. He doesn't get that, you know what I mean? He well, takes all that in stride. He's been calling him stupid his whole life. Yeah, he I takes it in stride. I don't think he's ever really stupid <laughs> you know as no. what do you how do you what do you take from stupid is as stupid does what do you take from that yeah that was actually i had that question written down too what is that what it stupid is as stupid it does when i was a kid i never got it yeah and then i still don't really get it it's stupid is as stupid does and it's like huh well if you're stupid and you do something stupid then it's stupid so. Well, maybe it's <laughs> stupid is in the action, not the person. Stupid is as stupid does. So maybe it's saying that the stupid is in the action, not the person themselves. A person isn't stupid. People just do stupid things. Maybe that's that. Maybe that's what it's trying to allude to. Stupid is as stupid does. So you're only stupid, you're stupid if you do you... stupid stuff. Not if you're not innately stupid. It's just if you're doing stupid things. Maybe you're really stupid if you believe it. Maybe. Stupid is. But throughout the movie, people tend to do, like, he's the only one that's doing selfless, actually, what seemingly smart things. Like, they all, it always ends up playing out and panning out for him. You know, and everybody's like, are you being stupid or something? But they're the ones that have the myopic vision, you know? They just can't see beyond this altruistic act to see the benefit in it. He doesn't even really necessarily see the benefit in it. He just knows that his moral compass points that way. Yeah, he's yeah. not doing it for benefit. No, he's not. Yeah, me too. Do we have any any uh, follow up on Forrest Gump? Anything we wanted to talk about? Well, it's just a great film. Great film. Great film, right? Every, we all every, everybody has to watch it. Everybody has to watch that movie at least once. I think they should. I don't yeah. know if they have to. <laughs> they have to. But I definitely. If you don't watch this movie, I'm coming to your house. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Well, there you watch go. this movie. That's correct. I won't really. It's, it's really good. You don't have to get beat up to watch it. Really. You can just enjoy it. Chris is going to end up getting himself beat up. <laughs> He's going to come to their house. They're going to come to your house. <laughs> Hopefully it's not Forrest. He'll throw. He'll run away. He'll run away. That was the thing, too, that this film, or Forrest Gump, made such an impact on our culture when yeah. it came out. That when oh, I was yeah. a kid, run Forrest Gump, I mean, we st people still say this. They to still day. say it to today. Day. Yeah. And it's kind of become a joke, <coughs> you know? And in the movie, I mean, it really wasn't a joke. That was a very dramatic <laughs> movie. Yeah. When he's running, and those braces pop, it, pop, pop, ping, tong. I mean, there's such a oh feeling. He's just like, Whoop, and he just starts zoom, like running like the wind. You feel so uplifted in that thing. scene. They say it. When I, I don't think I got it when I was a kid much, but his legs had nothing wrong with it. it was no, just his, his back. 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 And yeah, the so, doctor says it's crooked as a politician, and his mama said it's cur uh, qu crooked as a question mark. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> this is the two comments they make about it. But yeah, yeah his legs are strong. Strong as I've ever seen. So uh, next week, I'm going with Swing Blade. Sleep Sleep play. Play. All right. After you pick Forrest Gump, <coughs> I'm supposed to gonna go with it because it, like, for some reason, I don't know. I was like, oh, trending but, now. Trending now. <laughs> but I went ahead and it was like, I decided. No, I already settled on that. I was gonna pick Sleep Blade, so I almost switched and had a different film. But that'll be, I guess, the one after this. Okay. Oh, are you gonna keep awesome. a secret with the second? Film? Of course. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You'll have to stay tuned. Yeah. So Bill Bob Thornton's Sleep Blade next week. Man, I'm excited about this. I've, I've, I've 